So you are afraid of something Welcome to the Madness. We are the Mouths of Madness, your new favorite podcast for horror movie reviews. We're coming to you live tonight from the Dungeon of Doom. This is our episode 12 on the 2002, 28 Days Later. My name is Kevin, and whoa, let me tell you, I'm glad I was able to make it on time because I no. just I just got back from the vet. Yeah. You know how much I love my turtles, Barry and Sims. Oh. I've had those guys for a while, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. those some, things never die. No, sometimes I leave them and <laughs> the bastards just don't die. Yeah. I don't get it. But I decided to bring them to the vet. They were acting a little strange. The doctor gave me this medicine. It's kind of green and weird. I don't know. It's glowing a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that is so, strange. Yeah. I've never normal. seen a medicine like that. Yeah, I don't know. They've been kind of in a trance all week in front of a TV. I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, they haven't been watching any of the news that's just been blasted all week, you know. Uh, can we can oh. we see him? Yeah, definitely. Let me uh, let me get him out here. All right. All right. Well, let, let me introduce you. <coughs> Sitting right next to me is Dan. Dan, hang on. Let me hand you one of my turtles. Which oh. one? Uh, yeah, you know what? Don't touch Barry. He's a little uh, he's a little feisty. Here's Sims. Here. Oh, Sims. Oh, hey, Sims. Oh, God damn it. Oh. That what? fucker bit me. Oh, wait a minute. I handed you Barry. Man. I'm sorry. Fuck. Oh, oh Barry's a little bit of a bitch. Ouch. God oh. damn it. Oh, man. man. Hang on. Too. Hang on. Hang on. Let me grab Fuck, a couple. It hurts. Yeah. Hang on. You're bleeding here. Let me grab a Band-Aid for you. Jeez. All right. All right. While well, Dan's suturing up here, let me introduce you to the other members. Next, we have... The mayor of Halloween Town, Bearclaw. Bearclaw, what's going on? Oh, you know, just uh, just living the dream. I've got a little bit of a Ninja Turtle related trauma, so I'm going to uh, stay away from the turtles. But uh, you know, <laughs> but uh... <laughs> I, I got to put them back in their, their habitat. Yeah, their yeah. This is, this is worse than Ninja Turtles three. Oh it man, hurts. turtles in time. I'm going back in time. <laughs> oh my god. All right, last, we have the youngest member of Madness, my son, Logan. Logan, what's going on? Oh, I guess I'm doing okay. Are you okay, man? You look a little woozy. <laughs> I'm feeling woozy, yeah! I'll be all right. All right, we're, we're going to soldier through this. This is my favorite movie, you know? We're, it's my yeah. pick. We're going we're gonna to get through this. We got to get through it, unfortunately, so just wow. sit tight. We'll get you to the hospital, I guess. Yeah, Dan's a soldier. He's going to make it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Stay with I us like and find all out. Of your codes of confidence. <laughs> well, I know that there are a lot of other great horror movie podcasts out there, but what separates us from the other ones is that we're going to be giving you the older versus younger generation perspective. Myself, Dan, and Bearclaw are all in our late 30s, while my son Logan is a senior in high school. So this is. The Clash of the Generations. Now, before we get into the episode, I want to plug some of our stuff and where to find us. Please go follow us on Instagram, and that's at mouths.of.madness. We have a great YouTube channel where we have a special show called Straight Jacket Talk, where we also review some movies. Good episode on Serial Moms, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I was just about yeah, to say, we uh, we just did Serial Mom, so please go check that out. Finally, please write to us at the padded room at outlook.com and let bear claw know what are some of your favorite zombie movies yeah tell me about zombie movies maybe your relationship with turtles and really just help me to understand your rage that that drives you every day what's that rage michael the little girl can stop the rage inside <laughs> the rage <laughs> now for our content consumed this episode we're gonna let you know what we've been up to what we've been watching what we've been listening to reading or gaming now myself i actually went to a concert this past week i went and saw social distortion up in boston they are one of my top 
favorite bands of all time. So it was an awesome experience. They're an older band, so Old man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who knows how much longer they'll be playing around. So when they come to my area, I gotta see them every time, and they are worth going to see. Also on YouTube, I've been watching my favorite new horror show, which is Doctor Wolfula. He, he does horror movie reviews. They are amazing. Please go check him out. He's savage as fuck, as his uh, tagline <laughs> says. All right, that's it for me. How about you, Dan? Oh man, I I I, I ain't got nothing for you today, man. I know right. content consumed. Oh. Uh, no. You feeling okay? It's a little, a little flushed, but that bear, bear claw. Why don't you tell the folks what you've been getting into? So I have actually been replaying Resident Evil Village with the new DLC. Absolutely fantastic game. I'm playing it on PS5. Probably the best horror game out there, I would say. Oh. Yeah, it's the newest one, and you know, the, the there's new DLC out that adds. Because when you originally play the game, it's all first person mode, but this actually adds a third person mode, which is really cool. So it's almost like playing Resident Evil 4 and just a fantastic shooter. A lot of horror themes in there, everything from zombies to killer dolls that runs the gamut as you walk through this haunted distorted village and of course lady dimmicks you the uh giant vampire lady that stole the internet's heart there for a little bit <laughs> uh, <laughs> all uh, well worth playing and i'm happy to be revisiting that game and capping some zombies in the tradition of this movie so with that i'll uh, turn it over to logan I've been getting into kind of like the late night binge of just stand up comedy. So this week, obviously, was Netflix had a big festival in Los Angeles going on where they're having a lot of stand up comedians over there. It was called Netflix is a joke festival. Mm. I've been checking it out. You know, a lot of big stand up comedians that I'm a big fan of, you know, like John Mulaney. Did you see Cat Williams new show? No, I haven't oh, yet. That's hilarious. Yeah, I got I got to get around to a lot of them. There's a lot now because of it, but like I got to get like around to most of them. So, yeah, I've been having fun with that. For people that aren't familiar to it, I've been trying to read a new book every month. That's kind of my goal for each month to try to read a new book, something I haven't read before. I did finally finish my book of April, which was Crime and Punishment, a, a great story. Like I don't want to get too much into it because like I want I want the people at home to kind of settle into it and find oh, like, like Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. Oh uh, yeah. Oh wow, that's a dense book. <laughs> yeah, I like those books though. Like I was telling, I was telling the people last time when we were talking about, you know, I'm more into the psychological tales, you know, and well, it's psychological. <laughs> yeah, but like I think you know it's a great tale. You know, I'm into those kind of books, so <laughs> and that's basically what I've been getting into. Now, without any further ado, grab a beer, pull up a chair. Hold on to your straight jacket tight, and let's dive into the madness. We watched 28 Days Later from 2002. It was directed by Danny Boyle and was written by Alex Garland, who is pretty well known for such films as Annihilation and the new A24 movie Civil War. Ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't I know. I that. haven't seen Civil War yet, but I really like Annihilation. It's one of my favorite movies. I've it looks seen cool. Recently. I haven't seen it yet. Or I want to watch it after I've read the book, and I'm only oh. about a, a quarter of the way through the book right now. So it's on my to watch list. It's so it's so highly rated. I, I don't think I can miss it. I'm a little bit of a sci fi nerd, so that's definitely in there. Is that the Natalie Portman movie? Yes. Yeah. 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 I I have a funny it's story. It's with your boy in it too, uh, Oscar, Oscar Isaac. Isaac. I love yeah. Oscar Isaac. I do have a funny tale about Annihilation because i remember i was laying down in bed like it had to be like 10 o'clock at night mm -hmm. and i'm like you know it's dead quiet in the house you know like everyone's asleep almost my father's downstairs so i'm like he's probably watching something and i hear these strange noises and i'm like god man it wasn't aliens porn coming. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah it wasn't it wasn't that <laughs> Some, sometimes mommy and daddy wrestle like, oh yeah why <laughs> But you heard me oh. watching Annihilation. <laughs> you heard me watching Annihilation. So funny thing is, so I was hearing those kind of noises, and I was just like, "What the fuck is that?" And all I'm hearing is these like alien type noises. And I'm like, Am I, "Is the alien invasion going on? What's going on?" I I look outside, nothing, mm -hmm. nothing's going. On. I look up, and I'm like, "Okay, so aliens are not here yet." I go I go into the like house to try to see it, and the noises get like closer. I go to the basement. I'm like. 
you know, hoping to God, <laughs> like, there isn't some, like, aliens down there. I go downstairs, and it's you sitting down there watching Annihilation. I remember this now. <laughs> yeah, and you're I'm, like, what are you watching? And he's like, I'm watching Annihilation. I'm like, all I could hear was that in the bedroom is dead quiet. <laughs> yeah. And all I'm hearing these alien noises, and I thought I was getting, you know, abducted. I know on our last episode, we kind of talked about horror movies and, and our relationship. And I said, you know, really, horror doesn't scare me. What kind of does frighten me, though, is alien stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. hell yeah. You know, and, and this movie, Annihilation, does do alien stuff. And they do it in a fucked up, like, yeah. in your mind yeah. sort of way. So it's done really well. I do recommend seeing Annihilation if you haven't. Arrival is also pretty good, too. <laughs> if you like that stuff, you should really read Roadside Picnic. Uh, there's also a movie based on that called Stalker, which maybe we'll cover. Russian oh, movie, maybe. but uh, it's a horror movie, but oh, it's an alien okay. horror movie. Ooh. Just the premise, we done just the premise yeah. of it is very, it's very, very different. Uh, it's strange in ways, and it, and it has to do more with, like, alien technology that was yeah. left behind that nobody quite understands the book and the movie are both uh excellent oh that's cool yeah we'll definitely have to check that out now this was academy award winning killian murphy's first major movie role you know he's well known for obviously oppenheimer which he won the academy award for but I know he him. wasn't when this movie came yeah, out. Yeah, I know. I know him better as Thomas Shelby from the Peaky Blinders. From the fucking oh, Peaky yeah. Blinders. Yeah, man, that's that's a great show. Great, that show. was a great show. Yeah, man. another plug. You know what? Go you were saying it too in this movie. You're like, man, this music sounds like it's out of Peaky Blinders. Well, it has a great like English feel to it that rough oh, edge an english. english feel you know what i mean like yeah because there are there are obviously movies that are made in england that are more polished well and it was bbc like that. you know peaky blinders is a bbc original so they mostly were working off of that so they didn't have like sponsors or anything they didn't they weren't with netflix originally yeah. they were just like in england so like you know it's kind of rough kind of like this movie yeah definitely definitely now this movie had a budget of $8 million. Do you gentlemen know how much it grossed at the box office? So I remember this was a pretty big movie in our time. Like, this was like a big, this was a big movie. I was, it, it was fairly successful. Yeah, I'd go probably $25 million. Like, this was a big movie. I mean, I don't think it's for everybody. It's definitely, <laughs> it no. definitely is a niche movie, but uh, yeah, $20 million would be my guess. 20 or 25? 25. Let's All go right, 25. 25. All right. You know, I wasn't around during this time, so like, <laughs> I don't really know like how well it did, but based off of, you know, what Bear Claw says, well, as like my overall, like, you know, it's obviously well known. I'd go nice, you know, nice $40 million. Dang, that was mine. I knew um, it. I, I will go. Mind. I'll go forty-five. Oh, price oh, is right. He man. prices righted you. This is gonna blow your minds. It made eighty-four point six million dollars. Nice. You know that doesn't blow my mind. <laughs> doesn't blow my I mind. I, I think I undersold it because it was. It was a big. This was a big movie. Yeah, we definitely not, undersold which it. Which is which blows my mind. How come we couldn't find it anywhere? I. It's it's so funny that you mentioned that Bear Claw. I wrote this down right under this as one of my notes why can't we find this on Licensing, streaming man. or Dan, physical where did you media find it honestly we, when we were talking about it after our last uh recording logan had mentioned it was on sling he looked it up yep. and i just happened to watch it the next morning and it was still there and then i went to go watch it again like a couple days later and it was gone yep gone like that I had to watch it on a friend of ours who had it on their hard drive from college. Like that's how that's how crazy that's it a, was to try and find this movie. That's a hunt. I went on Amazon and they have Blu-rays that are so. First off, the ones I saw were not the singular movie. You had to buy the two-pack Blu-ray with right. twenty-eight weeks later. Right, that's the um sequel. the sequel, yep. and they were like fifty dollars. If you go on eBay to try to find just the movie itself, even the DVD, it's over $100 they're looking for. Wow. Jesus Christ. For some reason, man, I stumbled on Amazon and found a four-pack of... It's the most random yeah, collection I mean, yeah. of movies. It's, it's so random. It has, like, the original fly on it, but it also has... That's a good movie. It, and it, but it also has 28 Days Later. And I, it's funny because I went to put it on... 
And Logan was like, oh, man, is this going to work? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it did, though. It worked. It was the movie. It's just crazy. You know, so, you know, there are other means to getting this. We'll Score see. one for all, you know, on Instagram, there's a lot of physical media heads out there. There's a lot of people that like that VHS lifestyle, that do that DVD lifestyle and just want to collect everything in massive shelves that they have rooms dedicated to this stuff. Score one for them if they got this movie, because... Well, cue, cue the yo-ho, yo-ho. Yar, matey. Oh, man. Are we in Somali? Currently on Rotten Tomatoes, 28 Days Later has an 87% critic score and an 85% audience score. So this is certified fresh. Oh, and no. But, yeah, I mean, but it's kind of cool that the audience and the critics are pretty copacetic like they're yeah. they're in agreement here so that's always a good sign where because it always blows my mind when like you know one is super high and one is super low yeah like, you it shows know. a disconnect yeah you know, exactly. the critics are disconnected from the audience or the audiences are disconnected that's from the usually critics. how it goes though like especially with like i wouldn't say horror movies i mean sometimes newer horror movies definitely critics are less into it than the fans but like i would say more action movies are like that where it's like the audience is way different than the well, critics see i think it's the other way around i think newer horror and like the a24 stuff is pretty cri cri critically yeah. acclaimed versus some of the older horror yeah. which is you know Not. like our pal <laughs> roger ebert who pretty much shits on everything oh. horror from his time you know so yeah, well. But yeah, you guys have some pretty bad <laughs> This was Dan's pick for an episode. So, Dan, why did you choose 28 Days Later for us to review? I saw this movie in theaters. I believe it was like around 16 years old. I remember just the feeling after getting out of that movie. Like, I had just witnessed like one of the, like the greatest movies I had ever seen. And kind of like having this feeling of like so is this is this what it's like back in like the 70s and the 80s like when the halloweens and the nightmare on elm streets were coming out i felt like i kind of witnessed this classic horror movie yeah growing up your relationship with them is you see them on tv with your folks or with like friends family whatever so this is like my first experience seeing like a really really good horror movie in theaters and to Bear Claw's point, here we are now, 2024, and like it's it's hardly accessible yet. Its impact on the zombie genre in general, like uh -huh. there was such a huge boom of it in the 2000s. You know, World War Z heavily influenced by it. The Walking Dead yep. opening series starting in the hospital. That's 28 days later. I mean, just the running zombie thing. The effects, the practical effects are great. It's such a gritty and like raw movie and it feels real. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. that to me is the best part of this movie is that it is like a pretty realistic would, would you interpretation. Say that's like, would you say that's authenticity? Yes. I would say it's it's I think it's an authentic In depiction of like what would what would possibly happen if something like this were to happen. Yeah. Very, very awesome movie. I, I oh, yeah. just wanted to share well it with you all. Yeah, definitely. I think I want to ask the discussion question to start things. Just what are our overall thoughts on this movie? Now, Dan, I know this isn't your first watch of 28 Days Later, but I do want to ask you specifically, watching it now in 2024, what are your thoughts? Do you have some of the same reactions you did when you originally saw this? So... I would say the difference is, is in time passing is that when I was younger, it was like, oh man, like the fantasy of like being in a zombie apocalypse yeah. and being badass and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And like watching it now, I'm just like, I have such a sense of gratitude and like happy yeah. to, for like that civil is. society. <laughs> <laughs> well, we went without it for a couple of years there during COVID. So, you know, it's one of those things. This movie hits a little different nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was, so. the, what was the most frequent epidemic since uh, before then? Uh, Black it's, Plague. It's funny because I, I was looking Spanish at yeah, reviews true. of this movie and, you know, different documentaries uh -huh. behind the scenes. And this one I stumbled across on YouTube. It was like and this happened right after the movie this documentary took place 
and they kept talking about epidemics and you know like how this could be based on what could happen in our world and yeah wouldn't you <laughs> wouldn't you know uh, <laughs> that it did happen you know well, well ebola also happened too around well ebola time. happened around this time there was the uh foot and mouth disease the uh the dairy foot and mouth i think it was pigs and dairy foot and mouth disease was big in the uk mm -hmm. where the director was from so ray rabies that was like some of the influences of this but this i mean this is such a movie of its time in the zombie genre of movie like it it stands alone in in just how well, the freshness it brought to that concept it really brought the concept of zombie back i feel like if you were to ask me like the early 2000s this is post 9-11 and everything like that and this movie was supposed to be kind of a warning to us and a warning i don't think we heeded about societal rage <laughs> right. yep and I, I would say our love, our the America's love affair with societal rage started around the early two thousands. <laughs> but I wonder, I wonder what would have caused that. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. But, we'll never know. <laughs> like my good friend Justin Timberlake, you know, I got him on the phone, even though I'm not a big Canadian fan. We're bringing Zombie back because this movie really brought me back into the zombie world. You know. You know, zombie movies for me are kind of hit and miss, you know, kind of all of the time. You know, this is my first watch, so I really haven't seen this before. You know, there are a lot of movies in this kind of podcast that's kind of lightened to me, you know, because, like, I haven't watched a lot of horror movies. So, like, for this, it was kind of a first watch through, but I really enjoyed how, like, it made me feel, even though, you know, I was definitely like, Jesus, I, I have to watch something happy after <laughs> this because I'm like, I'm totally it is depressing now. at times. I mean, yeah, it's not times. bad, though. Uh... No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I will get into it. I just think, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff in this movie that kind of is just so well done. The camera work is phenomenal, and I think that's what really put me into it in the first place. Even just, like, the isolation effect that happens in this movie is just insane. Mm -hmm. It's just insane to see London just so empty. But well, like, like we've talked about with our some of our past movie reviews that we've done, kind of the isolation oh! factor in horror is scary concept right yeah i mean, yeah. I mean uh, horror in general i think you know we haven't really had a lot of kind of movies like that in a way like isolation i think like we haven't got into like all those kind of movies oh man when they do isolation in horror movies it is fascinating to watch especially the actor that's isolated like when they are just in this pit of despair it's just like insane like the eye like you gotta track the eyes how they react, like him going insane, like in those first couple minutes, because he's just like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. He's like totally like shock, you know, like he, he doesn't like go into it too much because like he's still trying to figure things out. But like you can tell he's definitely like, what the fuck is going on here? Mm -hmm. Well, I think he's pretty confused. He was uh, <laughs> he was in a coma. Yeah. This. So. Could, could you just imagine waking up in a hospital? It's completely isolated, and you're just butt ass fucking naked, just in a gurney <laughs> with wires hooked up to you. Just... I just, I can't even. That that's one of the most terrifying parts of this movie is like the idea of that, and then you know he, he's waking up, he's trying to figure out the world around him, and then next thing you know, a priest is coming at him for like full. <laughs> like that's one of the most terrifying scenes. You walk into that church, it's just littered with dead bodies. That's kind of like the oh shit moment of the movie. Is like he walks yeah. into that church and it's just like dead bodies, and then he makes a sound, and then two perk up, yep. and it's like oh the it's uh, and I mean that like this movie. The timing in this movie is what makes it for me. Like Pacing. when they attack and how they attack yeah. and like the viciousness and that the animalism of, of uh, the infected because they're not zombies because they didn't technically come back to the dead. If we want to be real like technical about this. <laughs> they, yeah, that's what I was saying. They yeah. There was never yes, a cessation of life and then a re. I got you. But this kind of falls in. It's definitely the zombie. zombie. It can't. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it I know what you're saying. And I agree. The yeah. fun the fun thing is, too, is Danny Boyle, I think, has even gone on record as to say, like, I don't consider my infected 
zombies. zombies. Yeah. yeah. Like how he has to say my infected. Like this is well, my. Well, I'm. I know what you're saying. It's well, just like, that, that raises a good point. What do you guys think that they're infected with? Do you think that it's like rage? I, because rage, well, rage. But like, do you think it's like a viral thing? Do you think it's supposed to be like some type of commentary kind of thing? Oh, it's definitely a, yeah, a, a it's commentary a thing. I I don't. They didn't bother to explore it because i don't think it was what they wanted to explore and they're english right i'll do you for that you what come here i think too it's it's That's like on rage. a deeper level too like because they don't want to be on the nose about kind of what they were talking yeah. about i don't know though they're pretty on the nose with it with the whole news thing or like the, the monkey watching the news and the it leads you thing. to it leads you to make like a kind of I, like thing yeah exactly yeah. exactly but i think for the the general audience who is watching it they might not pick up on the nuance yes, of that. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I don't want to. Actually, what Dan was saying, too, about this kind of being a blueprint for future zombie movies, it mm -hmm. really makes a lot of sense. With some of the things they do in this movie, it's like, yes, I like this stuff, what they're doing yeah. with zombies. You know, we don't want the just walking slow. I'm coming yeah. to get you, Barbara. Like, slow pacing zombies and you know and trying to get the understanding it's like this does it right and like you said it a lot of the the predecessors you know end up it's well it's it, because it's it's more grounded in reality, reality so there's right. less trying to circle the square on making it work and with this movie i think this movie made zombies different like i think before zombies were gonna supposed to be this like slowly moving but slowly overwhelming force yes that's kind of coming in zombies are sometimes a reflection of, of how our society and we see ourselves and each other's and our fears it was like when the first zombie movies came around it was this slow like suffocating like slowly your defenses are being broken down and you've got to try and defend yourself like a real slow burn but like they're coming and you can't really stop them for long yeah this is you see one of these things it's formidable yeah. it, 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 yeah. and it'll move fast and it will do by any means necessary unless you have Molotov cocktails unless yeah <laughs> unless you got Molotov cocktails even and then they were still station. going right yeah it's kind of like you know I saw this as kind of like The Last of Us you know like if you ever watched like The Last of Us or played any of the games yeah. like it gave me Last of Us vibes because I'm like you know, the zombies in most movies, but like you said, they're very slow, but these ones are tough sons of bitches. Like, they won't yeah. leave you alone. Well, you said, and, and one of the cool things, and this is what got me back into Resident Evil, and it makes a lot of sense if you've ever played, like, the original Resident Evil and stuff. Like, it makes sense that these kind of zo the zombies that'll really, like relentless but will mess you up like mm -hmm. that's that's a lot of uh a lot of the things and some of the scarier aspects in some of the resident evil games is like fast things that can come at you quick like mr x or uh, if, if you're in uh, resident evil 2 but yeah that, it's just just the speed and the ferocity of these and then and then you know you got all the other stuff which is so cool like the the corrupt military guys and all that fun stuff so this movie is really quite excellent was this your your first watch bear claw or oh, did you no, see this I've back seen in the this day? movie yeah. I, this I is seen this it is, with you <laughs> yeah i think i'm pretty sure yeah one of my first watch. i mean and you leave this movie just feeling like you saw something so cool like an action movie yeah. but like at the same time i was just watching it the other night i jumped out of my seat in the house scene when he's like looking out the window because that's the one thing this movie yes. does yeah does excellent is it lulls I you it, coming. it lo i didn't i, I and, and this and i'd seen it 10 10, 10 to 15 <laughs> times before and i didn't see that coming I mean, I they jump through the sky window. I don't know. It's it's at the, the one when in the house. Yeah, at the parents' house. Oh, when he oh, lights yeah, a yeah, candle yeah, yeah. and the, yeah, yeah. And the okay. infected and yeah. and comes the, out of the yes. window and like, attacks. I jumped. Him. I didn't see I that. I thought I thought you were talking about the other one, which made me jump, which was when they're in at the end of the movie when they're in the mansion and the uh, infected mauler. Yeah, like Mailer that. jumps through the Mailer. Yeah, yeah, he's at the window and then just. <laughs> God, I think sick. I think though I was telling you because when we watched this movie I watched uh, you know with him and I was like it was very loud so like it kind of mm -hmm. there was a weird volume thing when we were watching yeah, this so it, it made a for tough. a weird it made for a weird <laughs> setting but like I was telling him like you might want to turn it down as soon as we got to the housing because I'm like once he lets that candle I'm like ah he's the infected's gonna come and I was like I I saw the camera shots and I'm like turn it down a little bit and as soon as he turned it down. 
he infected Cam. I'm like, yeah, I could, I could see yeah. that coming a mile away because I'm like, I knew it was going to happen because it was just a matter of time. I got to be honest with you. Usually, I'm not a huge, uh, and again, this is the gray area, but I'm not a huge zombie movie fan. I uh -huh. really am not. Like, it's, it's one of the subgenres of horror that I really don't go out of my way to watch. But I think this movie does a lot of great things. And to your points of these zombies being different, I think what's cool, too, is they really build up the tension. So like those scenes you're talking about where they come through the window, you know, they have impact on you. Even the scenes, which are some of my favorite at the beginning, where Jim is just walking down the empty streets and, you know, you don't see anybody. It's just trash on the streets and... There's no, not even dead bodies or anything, too, yeah, which I think is eerie. creepy. Yeah. yeah. And, like, the other way they could have went with this is, like, everybody's infected, you know? So, like, he would be on the streets and there'd be a million people, like, uh, World War Z, like yeah. we were talking about. You know, they could have went that route. But I think this is scarier because they build up this tension of what's going on? Wait a minute. Where are the well, infected? You, you know, you know what it feels like? Have you ever had to go to like the airport early, like, like dead early, like 3am early, <laughs> not, not that it's early. like the or red eye or take a red eye somewhere or something. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're in the world before it opened up. And yeah. there's a very, there's a stillness and there's a creepiness to that. And especially if there, if you threw in the element of something could come at you from any direction. I mean, imagine walking like down the street. Agent. <laughs> imagine like, imagine if you were walking, down the street in this scenario you had just gotten into a coma or whatever and and all of a sudden you see somebody down the way there and you're like oh there's another person mm -hmm. then they're coming at you at speed yeah like how like how crazy terrifying is that in like an empty cityscape like they're coming at you but it's clear that they're coming at you with by a carry a bat i i love those scenes when they're in the tunnel and they get stuck in the tunnel <laughs> yeah the tunnel the, is my i life. was oh on my the God. edge of my seat when they're trying to that, change that, that flat Hannah was oh, pissing yeah. me off. get it done get it done but i love you know first off the rats come flying in oh yeah because animals know man they just know oh yeah why do rats leave a sinking ship you well know? like leading up to that of course you're like this is not a good idea and they're and they get stuck in there and your mind is playing tricks with you because you're looking for where's the infected where are they you know so then when you see them coming through the the tunnel at rapid pace it's fucking scary. Oh, it's terrifying. You know, and they don't overdo the zombie. Again, zombies in this movie. Yeah, like, they don't overdo it. They make the best usage for it. So, you know, and, and when you see them, too, it's not overdone either, because a lot of times they're in the shadows or you have like the red eyes or things like that. So they use them sparingly. So I, I really love that part. Fun, fun fact about the zombies and all the extras that played them. They did not get paid because the budget was so low. Oh, yikes. Yeah, well, the Screw budget was you. like $8 million for <laughs> yeah, this. And, and they did low. a lot with $8 million. Like, yeah, so cocktail. <laughs> let's talk about some of those aspects from the budget. So first off, I think Logan had said how he loved how this was shot. This was shot on digital Old cameras, yeah, right? Handheld. Yep. Old for their time. Now, there's two ways of looking at this, right? Because... It is a very gritty feel, and it's it's kind of a cool thing, too. Got to admit, like, how it was shot. One of the benefits, though, is they were able to close off those main roads for a short amount of time. And when you have these more handheld digital cameras, you don't need a lot of time to plan your yeah. shots. So it was definitely a benefit for it for this movie which was cool a uh, cool thing i had read too is you remember that boss that was flipped over on its side yes they did that and put it back up and out of the way in 20 minutes <laughs> total <laughs> how fucking that's crazy awesome. is that I yeah can't, like oh that's pretty wild yeah so i mean it was shot i i think my only gripe with how it was shot is i really like it i think it adds some grittiness to it I don't know if I would have wanted the whole movie done that way, though, because at times for me, this is just my opinion, it gets a little too much, I think, uh -huh. especially now I was reading. That's one of the problems with Blu-rays and things like that and trying to remaster. They don't this. hold up. The quality doesn't yeah. hold up on the newer TVs. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was watching that red letter media and they were talking about Star Trek. They love, I don't like Star Trek that much, but they really like Star Trek. And they were talking about how on the (laughs) Blu-rays, everything you, you could see all like they used to have to put like black pieces of paper taped on the back so it wouldn't reflect the camera le- but like the blu-ray show where i'm going with this is you see things in the new blu-ray editions of things that were never really meant to be seen when yeah. some of this stuff was originally taped so it's just kind of it's kind of crazy Th- this actually leads into a really kind of cool po- part of this movie so with the budget and the filming, how it was done, they actually didn't shoot the closing sequence. And so if you watch the closing shots in, uh-huh. in this movie, they were actually filmed on real film. Oh. <laughs> so it does look different, which I actually think is a cool aesthetic because it almost presents like this hope. And it, it yeah, was like it was a creative decision to do it that yeah. way, too. I cool. was reading as well. It was the fact that, yeah, they ran out of money and it's that scene that they they still frame cut scene of them crashing through the gate was where they ran out of money. And then the fox picked them up Uh and added funding to their budget. And then they decided to shoot a couple of alternative endings. Yeah, yeah. And you ended up getting the one you got in the theatrical release. But then there's like two other ones. Yeah. So there's a couple other endings. Now, listen to these. Do you guys prefer any of these ones? Yeah, and also I want the audience to think about this too, and I want the, you to write, take down notes on which ending you would prefer, and then I'm going to need you to send me those notes, and I'm going to need to hear your opinions at the padded room at outlook.com. Listen, all you Cubs. Yeah, uh, Cubs. I'm going to need to. I'm going to need some feedback on this. I need to know what ending to was the preference. <laughs> so in in the one they had originally planned and shot was Jim dies. Yep. What a bummer that would have been. Yeah, no, it was and a bummer. It, it, didn't, depressing. it did not test well. Nope. <laughs> oh, no, I, no, oh I wonder why. Yeah. The audiences did not like it. I feel like if this movie was made now, Jim would have certainly died. Yeah, I think you're right. If it was <laughs> made now and, silly oh, and, and Killian Murphy was 100%. in it, no way. You know, I think my hot t- maybe not my hot take, but is this ending, how it ends, is kind of a really good ending you know because it presents hope that right open i mean i, I think i think on. this is you're seeing a different time a different perspective this is one pandemic one complete uh, economic disaster this was 22 years ago now yeah 2002 this came out so this is 22 years ago now and like you think of how much more jaded people are i feel like nowadays for certain at least most of them would have died at the end but like yeah they were all everyone would have died everyone would have died at the end and the zombie yeah it, it like there were still sparkles of hope in our eyes was there though because i don't know if anybody caught this but at the end they they cut to the jet the yeah. guy flying in the jet and i say do you see anything out there he's nope i don't see anything I didn't, I, catch that. Yeah, I didn't remember. I didn't see yeah. 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 It's there. If you put the captions on, uh huh. The fighter pilot says, I don't see anything. Oh. Huh. That is interesting. That's dark. It's funny, too, with that jet. It's a real jet. It actually costs them less to use a real jet versus uh, digitally putting it in there. Really? I was just like gonna say that's dynamic. where the that's where the budget went. <laughs> now, Logan, listen to this other ending for you. How do you like this one? Is it Billy? <laughs> Billy I've was come to dr- save you. <laughs> the whole outbreak was a dream. We live inside a dream. Okay, so what? it's funny we say that yeah. because it was the scene where everyone was sleeping at this place where they were kind of just taking the pills. And Jim yeah, went it was to, like the ruins. Yeah, like the scene. ruins. Jim mm-hmm. went to sleep and he like woke up in that weird, vivid dream sequence. Yep. And I was like, he went to sleep again. And I was like, what if everything that happens after this point is this just a dream? dream? Like inter- like uh, Inception right. kind of way. You create the world of the dream. Yeah, I remember we talked about Inception and we, we also talked about it's so hard to pull off this sort of ending. Inception did it. <laughs> because it's like lying to your audience and your audience hey, is like... I yeah. just feel like the dream... Dreams, Not lying. Dream and time travel, unless you're doing a movie like Inception... 
Dreams and time travel should stay out of any story that you want to have any stakes whatsoever. Because as soon mm-hmm. as you introduce either one of those concepts, my ability to, to give a shit it just goes out the window. Well, it's not about <laughs> you, Bear Claw. It's about one thing and one thing only. <laughs> What's that? Money. <laughs> I smell money. <laughs> now, the last one is kind of the most fucked up one, in my opinion. Yeah. Everyone dies. Frank isn't killed. Yeah. He's tied up, and they find this research lab, and they do a transfusion on Jim, and they save Frank. Well, here's here's a, a thing I heard about that. They say that it's in the blood, but if you switch the blood, and I was fuzzy on this point, but wasn't the transfusion where Jim took, like, Frank's blood? So then Jim would be... Jim would, became infected, and uh, he, like, sacrificed himself kind of uh, thing as, okay. like, a hero. Okay, well... That was that was I either guess way. They're, more sense. they're both lame. Excessive. The director said like he, he wanted it to be like Ebola, and actually it's funny because they said technically it just didn't make sense to them. Like because well, like if you switch to the, the blood, I mean he got one drop of blood in his eyes, and that's what caused him to totally melt down. You know, yeah. Frank. So it wouldn't make sense if you could just change out the blood and like <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to me because I'm like either way, like Jim barely knows the dude he's not gonna do a whole transfusion on some guy he just met but jim has a heart as he proved. yeah but yeah. he didn't kill him yeah that's <laughs> that's true. his that's his heart you know he didn't kill him that is true i mean i think that scene with frank was very heartbreaking not not where he got necessarily got the blood in his oh, eye that was heartbreaking that was, well, that, yeah. was that was but even the part before because it was like they had so much hope and frank was this beacon of hope right and he's yeah, selling it to him his, and his daughter. daughter yeah we're like yeah this is the plan and then they get there and it's like this big letdown and he has that breakdown we have to go yeah go fucking way I, I love that scene in a way because you know, it felt real. Like it felt like how you would really react in that moment. But I want to ask you guys, what are some of your favorite scenes in this movie? Dan, what do you have for some of your standouts? To piggyback off of what you were saying, I love the four protagonists in this movie and just that whole succession of scenes where it's just, it's them, the four of them. And it's like this surrogate family, this collection of relationships coming together. Like Frank is kind of taken on this like fatherly role to Mm -hmm. selena and to to jim along with his daughter Mm -hmm. and then like selena and jim are like big brother and big sister to hannah and so like it's like in the midst of all of this chaos like there's this beautiful relationships happening and then you get the grocery scene and it's the desert in the oasis Mm -hmm. this is danny boyle kind of setting you up for what what's about to come in the third act you're lulled into this like oh well like this is a shit situation but you know like human beings you're gonna find some sort of good or wholesomeness out of a situation and it's just them being you know human beings and bonding and connecting with each other and then you get this mirage of safety in this grocery store and then they they have like their last meal yeah and then frank gets infected and ends up dying and it's just like that fucking slap back to reality yeah i agree with you i think what was cool about those scenes is it's like again back to the hope concept yeah no matter how bad things are there is hope that we can have relationships with each other we can enjoy each other we can enjoy nature too because it was like out in nature and there's horses and you know it's like Man's one with nature again, and and kind of there is hope for this could work out in the future. <laughs> yeah, and of course there's also Jim's rampage at the end. Yes, like to me it's like probably the best nine minutes of cinematography. Like everything, oh, fantastic about it. about it from the music to how it's shot, like how everything just lines up. Yeah, it's just so. It's so satisfying and rewarding because you see, like, Jim, who's this average Joe guy, get (laughs) dicked around and just pushed around. He finally just throws away that, like, old world. Like, this is the new world now. And, like, I have, I choose violence because, like, I have no choice. Yeah. 
It's like he uses rage, rage against he rage. He uses the rage. <laughs> yeah, he, he harnesses the rage <laughs> to productive ends. Because, you know, rage isn't always a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes rage is a good thing. You Sometimes know? you need rage, right? Yeah, to drive change or, you know, whatever. <laughs> right. Logan, what do, you, what do you say? The opening shots are obviously like my favorite things like in this entire movie. I'm not a big fan of like, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the surrogate family because I feel like it's hard for people to kind of connect in these kind of scenes. But obviously like, you feel for Frank and Hannah like in scenes, especially the hard ones, like especially when Frank is getting infected. I think just the confusion that is like painted on every single one of them, like even though they have like some kind of like knowledge of this kind of thing, they're still in like the beginning of this whole epidemic so like a lot of them are still going through like they're not used to having to deal with this so like a lot of that paints a lot of like they have a lot of false hope you know like especially in frank and i think like these scenes especially the tunnel scenes i'm like these characters are just going through hell to get to like this safe haven my favorite scene of this entire movie is the ending where jim gets to the i don't know what to call it, like mansion or whatever yeah, and mansion. he lets the uh he lets the infected soldier out on at all of them and just like the rain sequence and everything going on like the fighting sequence and i'm like oh man like i was into it did you guys feel like that third act it almost felt like a different movie but i think in a good way i'm not yeah. saying it yeah as, no you know, no yeah really it, i think it, it changed the narrative a little bit mm-hmm. from certain from you know who they were surviving against who the enemy was yes how they're... their situation had slightly improved but not really in many ways <laughs> i love to the major before uh, all this had happened kind of foreshadowed what was about to happen in a way yeah because he had talked about at the dinner it's scene. the answer to the infection <laughs> well he had talked about the dinner scene you know for uh-huh. him there was no really real change because he right. had seen humans kill humans now uh-huh he had seen humans kill humans 28 days before yeah and 28 days before that and like i thought that was almost a foreshadowing for well, we're going to have more humans killing humans here coming mm-hmm. up, you know? Yeah. Because whether they're infected or not, there's something that inevitably conflict or whatever have you, there, there's going to be a human-on-human conflict. And when you're you? a soldier, you, there's always somebody to fight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, having been in the military myself, and you, you it, it gives you a different perspective on bad situations Mm -hmm. and it prepares you more for them mentally it's just one of those things you almost switch to a mode of like bare practicality and it's something that i think is is a very different way of thinking yeah than than most people are prepared for and dealing with a different level of true horror right then more people are prepared for you know what i mean and i think that they did an excellent job in this movie in reflecting that in the major who was like okay this there's this shitty like awful situation yeah but you know what here's the reality of the situation i gotta give my men hope or else my men stop fighting right I got to say that there's a future for them or something for them to do or else they stop fighting and like he's got to like He's got a very practical problem and a very practical, (laughs) morally questionable solution. But here's my question, too, because you had brought up kind of with that soldier's mentality. Do you think that actually happens to the character Jim when he's about to be executed and that changes in his head? Jim is not. You don't get a ton of insight into Jim's character throughout the movie. He is very much a blank slate in a lot of ways. But you do get that, like, that's the moment when he has put aside, he puts aside his humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which you could argue that maybe sometimes soldiers have to do as well, where you put aside your humanity 
and it's time to embrace the <laughs> embrace the chaos right. you know ride the snake so to speak but yeah. like yeah that, that's one of the craziest things for me one of my favorite scenes in this movie is when they go to see his parents and his oh, parents yeah. that's had, your favorite <laughs> well because it's one of the things that's to me that's the moment the air that that's the thing that so many of, of these zombie movies and stuff they never talk about they never share everybody's an orphan nobody you know or or, or they all like incredibly hurt with like quote unquote people they lost it never shows the real like damage that something like this does yeah or it doesn't usually show it in a meaningful way because that's incredibly sad that scene is incredibly sad yeah but boy does that drive home the point of like this is a new reality that i gotta deal with right. now that that parent suicide note it is it's it's truly heartbreaking oh yeah but the juxtaposition of jim finding it in their bedroom where it looks like they partied hard and plowed <laughs> to close out the end of the world. I mean, hey, it's fucking awesome. Hey, if you gotta, you gotta go, go out, you gotta go. I love <laughs> Jim's go parents. Out with a bang. <laughs> I love that they planned for Jim to find them in their underwear. Yeah. Like, fuck yes. <laughs> they planned their shit. Dang, that's a way to look at it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That note is uh, it was harsh, but. Oh, but that that whole like that whole scene to me makes it so real. And, you know, you think about the different characters and like you think about like Jim is kind of like us coming into this story. Right. Right. Confused. Yeah. We don't really. Jim is, he is the audience. He too. is the audience for much of yeah. this. And then you've got Selena. She's given up her humanity for the sake of survival. Cause as soon as that one guy gets bit in the, the first opening bits, she hacks him up with a yeah. machete. No prob, Bob. Look, if someone gets infected, you've got between 10 and 20 seconds to kill them. It might be your brother or your sister or your oldest friend. It makes no difference. I'm, you know, a normal, well-adjusted person might hesitate to do that, right. but she's kind of switched. Can't hesitate. You can't hesitate yeah. to pure survival mode. And then you've got Hannah and Frank who are, they have, you know, and Selena even says this, they have each other. Yeah. Their world has changed, but they still have some of the, like, remnants from the previous world. You know, it's funny because for me, you know, there are great scenes in this movie, but I think what I really love is the dialogue between the characters. And I got to credit Alex Garland's writing in this because he does exposition so good where it's not beating you over the head with uh -huh. everything that's going on. Let's explain everything to you. Explain every little thing. We don't need yeah. it. Right. We need, mm -hmm. we need the important stuff, right? But we also need to develop these characters a little bit. Yeah. And even you can do it in a one minute conversation. It doesn't yeah. have to be this whole monologue. It's that, a very tight movie. Yeah. But it's good. And it's Pacing written good. I'll, I'll give you a great example was that scene after they find Jim's parents. right? Yeah. And Mark, the character Mark, uh -huh. was talking about what had happened with his parents. Not so my dad. Not my mom or my sister. My dad, his face. Selena's right. He should be grateful. Yeah. Man, oh. I love how the camera's focused on his eyes and you could see the tears behind his does, eyes. Does that like remind that that whole thing? Did that remind anybody of like Remember, I mean, there was a very real and scary time with COVID when there like wasn't enough ventilators yeah. or they yeah. thought ventilators were the option. And like there was a very scary like it, the hospitals may not be able to take care yeah, of you. Yeah, right. Like and that's that kind of like that fear. Like oh, it resonates so much more now than it did back then. Right. A hundred percent. And I think even in that one minute story he was telling it's like you know his character now you yeah. know who he is and that's why in the next scene when selena hacks him to death it has so much more weight to it yeah because if you didn't know him what, what's the difference right yeah i think you know like you were obviously saying like when we were watching it together you're like i didn't i wasn't expecting him to be killed so quickly mm -hmm. but then i was like that's the thing about these zombie movies, especially horror movies in general. You never know when it's going to be your last. Like, you're right. You're right. I think you're right. I, like I was saying, I'm like, if Brennan Gleason's in this movie, like they're obviously going to make him a main character. So like Mark's definitely getting killed. I was like, who the hell is this Mark actor? 
But like <laughs> a little mad eye moody action for you. Well, nobody knew any of these actors with, at this time. At this time, most yeah, of them became. Yeah. Who was Selena again? It was. Uh, she's a big actress. I don't too. remember her name off the top of my uh, head. It was Naomi Harris. Naomi Harris. Oh, okay. She's a big actress. Yeah, I think she went out. She did some James Bond stuff. I think and a bunch oh, of other, other things. That's big time. Yeah. No. Uh, and then you know, obviously, Cillian C- Murphy. I mean, Brendan Gleeson. Murphy or Cillian? Or Killian? Murphy. I think whatever. it's Killian. Killian. I believe. I used to Who say cares? Cillian Murphy all the time. I don't know. Yeah, he's not gonna listen to this. Killian. Maybe he's a huge fan. And right. if you are out let there, us Killian, know. <laughs> let me know at the padded room <laughs> at outlook.com uh, what your thoughts are, uh, Killian or Cillian. But uh, Mr. Murphy, Mr. Murphy, whatever, whatever it may be, Mr. But, Thomas. But Shelby. I mean, you know, you got Brandon Gleason in this. He was a big actor even at the Dude, time. He was in uh, yeah. Braveheart. Yeah, and then yeah. you got, and then the major there, Christopher Eccleston, yes. soon to be Doctor Who. Oh, yeah, he, nice. he became Doctor Who for a little while there. He's also a big actor though. He was in, he played the bad guy in that car movie with Nicolas Cage. What was it? Gone in sixty Gone seconds. Gone in sixty seconds. He yep. was the bad guy. He's a bad. He played the bad guy in like the GI Joe does movie have too. Kind of a- Dick he, walk at you know. Kind I of was like very that. surprised when he was the doctor in Doctor Who. But <laughs> you know, Doctor People's Who great isn't, doctor. Yeah, Doctor Who isn't really necessarily like a great, you know, guy. I I think one of my favorite lines of dialogue in this movie is, you know, kind of it shows you the intelligence to the writing mm-hmm. when Selena is walking with Jim. And she says, you know, what are you looking for? You, you want to find a cure? Have you got any plans, Jim? Do you want us to find a cure and save the world or just fall in love and fuck? You want to fall in love and fuck all the time? Like what? You know, it, it's yeah. just like this. It, it For zombie movies, it always goes either way. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So it's just it's funny to me, like the intelligence of the writing, like. You know they're kind of fourth wall break. What you know? would you do? Like, what's your what's your get, what's your game road. plan? What are you what are you trying to yeah, get? They didn't do you know? either or really. Yeah, I mean, we also have to talk about the music in this movie. Doing great not? music. Oh yeah. I mean, it kind of sets the scenes up. It's like the appetizer, will you, to the main? Oh action. yeah. Yeah, nice instrumentals. John Murphy, he did the music for 28, and one of the most iconic songs ever in in cinema is "In the House in the Heartbeat." It pops up in pretty frequently in in movies. I think just amazing, just piece, just how it builds tension. Mm-hmm. And I believe he even mentioned that like the whole point of the song is supposed to be like a representation of the cycle of grief and how it's like this slow build climaxing to like anger and rage and then like the end is kind of like that quiet pe- part is the acceptance piece of it yeah that makes sense i just think especially that scene with that song it was so well done the rain imagery i mean oh i love that oh yeah man. and just when like jim's going crazy and like he's smashing the dude's head against the oh, wall and yeah. the spittle flying oh. all over the fucking place puts his fingers in the dude's eyes <sighs> I love the like like you said too the blood imagery you know it's like that pop of color and and how it was shot too rage you know that they they just run up and throw up blood on you and their eyes are blood red I mean it's just so visceral and so you know violent. Of, and violent <laughs> and you know and it personifies rage it's like raw. It, it just that's what makes this movie the best is by and far is the infected that are just. You know, they're fast, they're quick. And one of the things that I think is is also very clever with this movie is is it confronts the one big problem that or, or the one thing that, you know, I always had with zombie movies and stuff, which is, well, like, just wait for them to starve, right? I mean, on some timeline, you really just have to out, like, you have to physic- outlast them. You have to outlast them because physically the machinery can't, <laughs> unless it's caused by some supernatural so, thing. So is that always like a commentary on human nature? Like we, can't, we can't survive. You know, we can't outlast this. You know, yeah, because uh, yeah, yeah. people go crazy and then they turn on each other and yeah. everything else. That Survival right? the fittest. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. You know, rage is inherent. So I do want to ask that, though. At the end, right, we do have shots of the infected laying on the ground, and they look like they're starving to death. Is that right. correct? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah? Okay. That's what they list it as. Okay. Well, these can die. That's, that's an important distinction. Like, So in theory, 
the fucked up major was kind of on to something a little bit. I mean, yeah. If there was no survivors, which I mean, I know this is kind of a point of debate. If there was no survivors outside of the UK, you know, how wrong is the? Ma- I mean, he's obviously morally wrong from a civilized point right. of view, but. You know, if everybody else is dead and, you know. Okay, another thing I want to ask, the soldier that was kind of the good guy soldier. Yeah. Who was going to be executed with Jim, right? Yeah. He had said when he was tied up with Jim that he was thinking that they were being quarantined on their island, right? That the rest of the world was maybe okay. Because they yeah. had said that there were maybe infections in Paris and New York, I think. Uh-huh. I don't know if it was a radio broadcast yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Yeah. was shown throughout. But there's no real evidence that... This no, he was, was just, that, that that was coming out of his ass. He was just trying to make up. Like, well, no. So I want to ask, like that soldier. Do you think he was correct in like maybe England as the island there was the only infected the containment yeah. site? I think I think that's kind of what it, the the military suggests is that at least that guy that it almost seems like there was like a mutiny. Like he was of this belief that the island was being quarantined. And everybody else was like, no, this is the end of the world. Yeah. And and it was kind of like they got engrossed in the idea of yes. like, Maybe this they is the end. wanted it to be the yes. end of the world. Yes. They wanted it to be so, lawless. And- Dan, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because in my mind, I was thinking like this was kind of a uh, maybe a commentary on like free will and free thinking. Yes. Yeah. Because you have this one guy who's going against the grain. <laughs> well, what's that? Like the uh, 12 angry men there or something like that, where yeah. it's like one person who's like, no, no, no. And- it's like one of my favorite movies of all time. But what drove that concept home for me that maybe it is just england that is experiencing this is when jim is about to be executed and then he looks up and he does yes Mm -hmm. and then it was like light bulb and maybe that's where like the real turn happened in him almost you know he saw that hope yeah salvation yes or maybe he just got tired from running from the rage and embraced it He embraced it. We all have to embrace it. Put on his makeup because he was angry. Before we get into our hook, line, and stinker, I do want to address the physical media and streaming thing with... Debacle with this movie. Yeah, with this movie, which is messed up. But apparently what I read, and maybe you gentlemen can correct me on this, is Disney lost the rights to the film. The (laughs) the Blu-ray disc is out of print, which again, physical media, man, physical media. This is why it's important to keep physical media alive. Yeah. What the fuck? Oh, we had it for a second. But there is good news on the horizon. Sony has acquired the rights. Uh Uh-huh. They are actively planning a 28 years later yep. sequel. Whoa. This would also bring back Danny Boyle and uh, Alex. Alex Garland. And nice. Cillian Murphy is going to be a uh, producer. Oh, okay. I did hear that. It would be cool yeah. if he came back. Yeah. And did it. I don't think... Co- well, he might not be in it, but yeah. So, I mean, I want to ask, are you guys excited for a possible sequel, Dan? What Absolutely. Do you think? Oh, yeah. There's a lot they can do, especially with... I think what they should do is they should make, like... This is 28 years later, so obviously like, I would still say, you know, this is kind of like a different virus to what the one we already know, like in this one, the rage virus. Mm-hmm. This could be like a new... Ooh, that's This could be a new, it. like, virus where it's more powerful. Like, they don't starve. Well, I like, I also really like it when people mess with the concept of virus. Like, this one is like clearly almost like a psychological virus. Yeah. But there's another, there's a really great horror writer, Jiro Itu, and he wrote, and there's actually a movie about this, but it's called Uzumaki, which is actually where there's like a virus of reality. All of a sudden, people just start seeing like, seeing like this circular pattern and and it just starts appearing everywhere and just in everything and like in places it shouldn't be. And it just slowly takes over like their whole reality. But like, shit, 
That's crazy. Just Think a about little, it. Like a shape, just a shape, just the spiral, a spiral like um, that. And it just slowly like takes over reality. But it's like a virus has oh. infected reality. How cool is that? I can't even think about that, man, because it, I, yeah, I, it, it, it fucks it's, with my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you guys seen 28 weeks later? The so-called sequel to I've seen it. But I've I seen could it. not remember. I could yeah. not tell you a single thing Same about it. Thing, right man. Now. Yeah, I haven't seen it either, but it seems like what I've read is people are kind of indifferent on it and don't really consider it a true sequel because Danny Boyle only directed the opening and mm -hmm. that is it's funny because that is what the movie is mostly lauded oh. for is the opener. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird to me because I'm like, man, like he got it right with 20, 28 days later. But like if they do a sequel, they got to do it right. Mm -hmm. They got to get like I think they should start fresh with the new cast they shouldn't bring back characters just for the oh, sake of it i think okay. they should start over a little bit you can have killian murphy because you know it's killian murphy <laughs> you gotta make some money yeah i just i i wouldn't i wouldn't even know how you'd bring back these characters yeah like, yeah, like, yeah you're there right. is a comic book series about the 28 days later what happens afterwards and really it, yeah it's, oh, it's pretty bad cool. and they there's not a lot of happy endings. Jim oh. gets arrested and Hannah gets adopted by a German family. So, like, they kind of get separated a little bit. Uh, well, so. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> but we are excited for 28 years later. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're on to our favorite segment. Hook, line, and stinker. It's time for more. Now, our hook is is our favorite kill of the movie. Our line is our favorite line or quote from the movie. Our stinker is something funny or strange or weird or terrible that happens in the movie that makes it either better or worse. For me, my hook, my favorite kill, is actually Mark's death because... It came out of nowhere, and I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> Selena just so hacked him up with a machete. <laughs> no questions <laughs> asked. <laughs> he looks down at his arm, and then next thing I know, he's getting hacked. I originally thought she was just hacking his arm off. Yeah, so did I. Then there was too many slings. Yeah, I was like, no, he's dead. <laughs> no, I I he, didn't see that. I just dead. saw that he was getting killed, and I was like, oh, well. <laughs> My line Mark. is when they're about to drive into the tunnel... And Jim goes. See, this is a really shit idea. You know why? Because it's really obviously a shit idea. <laughs> and I was thinking that too. I'm like, this is. I said to Logan, I was like, they only took like two seconds to think about just driving in this tunnel, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me tell you, there's a video game, and this is relevant to this. It's an awesome video game. It was overlooked for its time. It's called Days Gone Zombie Video Game, right? Mm -hmm. But it's always so tense when you've got to take your motorcycle into tunnels. Because you're always going to get ambushed in yeah. those tunnels. And it's just one of those things. And you got to pray <laughs> it's not a horde. And you, you're just going to be dealing with, with like onesie twosie zombies. And especially early in that game, if you're not like appropriately armed. Driving through a tunnel is a real tense experience in a zombie apocalypse is my point. Everyone knows it's a shit idea. It's a shit <laughs> idea. You know why? Because it's a really obviously shit idea. <laughs> For my stinker on this, I really don't have much. My only real complaint is sometimes how it's shot you know sometimes it's a little too much for me and i do crave that actual film look you know but that's just my opinion dan how about you all right well uh my hook is the ice squish as i'm referring to it as it's uh jim at his most unhinged moment he finally accepts that survival in this environment requires having to be a killer when necessary mm -hmm. line hannah who's high as a kite the dead and you're going to be next. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. uh, Mailer just plows <laughs> through the window. That was cool. I forgot about I really, that. I really like how the, the dead guy uh, on the YouTube, the, the guy who counts the, the the kills in it, and he's like, Mailer's a party animal. He's the he MVP. Does, he's the MVP. Uh, yeah, the dead meat guy. Yeah. And he's like, Mailer's a party animal. <laughs> As he shows up, he's like, hey, guys, I'm here. And then busts through the window. <laughs> he lost oh, the imitation. He lost, yeah. <laughs> I would be pissed off, too, if I was chained up in a garden. Which, also, 
kind of alludes to the idea that the infective do on some level have some kind of consciousness. Yeah. Uh, he's pissed off. He went after the uh, the people who captured yeah. him. Plus he was him smart up. with it too because he was just waiting for them to be right next to the window for him to just jump out. And then to follow it up as Selena is like pushing her out of there. She's like, don't worry, I feel fine, really. Don't worry, I'm fine. <laughs> like, she just has she's completely zooted. She got that Love sleeping it. pills. The stinker for me is uh, just, I don't know, the ending. They didn't really do a good job sticking the the ending, in my opinion. It felt kind of rushed. It was more like a montage kind of thing. That That's really it for me. What do you, what do you got, Bear Claw? So... For my hook, one of my favorite things, and it's such just a, a cool action shot, is when Jim takes the crowbar and puts it across that soldier's face. Yeah. Uh, when he's like running. Oh, yeah. That's the such like an whack. iconic shot when he's running and just whacks yeah. and just kills that that one soldier. I had that as that to me is like just one of the I mean, it's not a cool moment because the guy's getting hit in the face with the crowbar, <laughs> but it's a cool moment from the aspect of like he just runs and just whips him right in the face and, and he, he he goes down. I also didn't mind the uh, major that was being cool. pulled yeah. for a car. It was pretty cool. Yeah, kill too. Awesome. Uh, and then my line is actually it's not a line so much as it's the note that his parents left oh yeah. which is with endless love we left you sleeping now we're sleeping with you don't wake up kiss and it's like oh that like even just reading it just then like shivers down my i got goosebumps yeah. and then the stinker you know i in my head canon, I choose to see these zombies as truly feral, like rabies kind of individuals. Mm -hmm. And when the one kid that he has to bash his the head in in the gas station, the kid says, I hate you. And there's actually that line is still in the movie. I see that as a stinker because I don't visualize these guys being able to talk. And they even said in some of the commentary that that was left in by accident in a final release. But where the kid goes, I hate you. I hate you. I hate oh, you. And it's yeah, like yeah. they I, I don't like to think of these zombies as being sentient in any way, shape or form. You know? Yeah, that's a good call. Bear so, call. so that's my stinker. You and know what Logan, they say? What yeah, are yours? Kids. I must go punch that baby. <laughs> <laughs> Those uh, newts, man, they're a problem in that uh, Days Gone game. <laughs> yeah. So for my hook, I do have the scene where the soldier's running out of the house and Jim nails him with a gun right to the chest uh -huh. or right Good to the one. stomach. It was yeah. really just well done. I love it. It's the like him running into it and just like the, the camera looking right at the face of the soldier. Like it's very well done. I also like the camera looking at Jim too. Yeah. Yeah. I do yes. like when he finds <sighs> him, when uh, the Colonel finds him and like holds his hand as like he oh, lets, yeah. like he yeah. dies. Like that was just like a very, very grim story. But like, I do like that. I That does go into my line. One of my favorite lines was, You killed all my boys. You killed my boys. Like when he's at the car mm -hmm. and he's got the gun at him. Yeah. Like that was one of my favorite lines because I'm like, oh, it's so well done. Because now you're like feeling for the dude who just lost like all of his men, even though, you know, they were trying to rape uh, women. But uh, my other favorite line is there is kind of like a uh, simple kind of like line here. Jim says to Selena, I got a headache. Selena, is it bad? Jim goes, it's bad. Selena says, well, why didn't you say anything before? Jim says, because I didn't think you'd give a shit. <laughs> like, like, kind of like leading into it, because like in the beginning, like obviously we see Selena doesn't care about like any anything in this point. And then like obviously as time goes on, you know, like they start to care about each other a little bit more. I also do like the scene where she's going to bed and Jim goes, thank you. And she's like, sure. And he's like, no, I mean, like, thank you. Thank you for saving me. She's like, and I mean, sure. I know. I said, sure. <laughs> like, she still doesn't care, but I like how it goes on, like, this kind of, like, tension between the two. Of them. But they, you know, another thing, too, like you pointed out with Selena is, like, all she cared about was survival, but then that changes throughout the movie. So there is great character, character development. Yeah, character yeah. development, yeah, is very good. Stinker, for me, I hate the opening. <laughs> I don't like the opening. I don't think it was needed. You don't want to see Killian Murphy's uh No, 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 not that. The, <laughs> oh, I'm talking the about the chimpanzees. Oh, the chimpanzees. Yeah. That that was that was hard to watch. I don't like see all the apes in the on like prisons and I was just like, oh god, that was really 
Not really, really set the tone for you, huh? Yeah, like that was like Jesus Christ. Like uh, I was My like sympathies for chimpanzees has been much less since one ripped that lady's face oh, off. That, that was happened, in Connecticut. Yeah, I know, yeah. That happened in our state. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, that's because of their wild animals. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. You shouldn't have those as pets. We well, maybe humans are wild animals. animals too, Logan. Maybe that's what this well, movie is telling. Well, we're not we're not pets. <laughs> Are we pets? <laughs> Do we gentlemen have any honorable mentions that you want to talk about for lines or kills, anything like that? I just second you, you know, right after Jim's line there of how, uh, you know, you see, this is a really shit idea. Tunnel full of fucking cars and broken glass. It's a really fucking obviously shit idea. And Frank just goes, hold on. <laughs> Doesn't even Hold think. my beer. <laughs> yeah. I just, I would like to add Frank to the Hall of Slain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He would fit in, I Frank think. Frank was a boy. Frank good. He had that riot gear. He was ready to tango with those uh, infected Oh, yeah, men. the riot gear was a cool scene. Yeah. I can picture Why didn't Frank. Why did the riot gear come out? And he, uh, he should have brought the riot gear with him. I brought that with me. I feel like that's the... I can picture Frank. Frank and Hollis slamming Dude. a couple beers, oh, driving yeah. that baller car. That <laughs> him and Billy, oh, yeah. the cab there. I think, I think to add to my honorable mentions for stinkers, I was like, man, you know what? I gotta agree with Dan. The ending was also pretty bad. I did like the scene where Kelly Murphy, you know, was like the smile on his face because we haven't seen a smile on his face this entire movie, but just like the ending where it goes from like this terrible tale to like him finally being happy at the end. Like that was okay, but like. Other than that, it was very quick, and I just felt like it was like, that's the ending? That's well, it? you didn't see the rest of it. Then he looks down and takes out his pocket watch. Yeah. And then it's like Peaky Blinders music. Yeah. Oh, it's like, I was like, <laughs> it's, his origin, it's his origin story. Red, oh, right, red right, right hand starts playing. Yeah. Uh, Tommy, right. where you been? Everything's <laughs> been going on. We are even like... When we went to that mansion, I was like, that's just Thomas Shelby's house. It did look like Thomas Shelby's house, huh? that mansion. Well, like, they order a baby for her, bro. I knew she <laughs> Well, we're on to our final reading. They're gonna rate the movie. What will they rate the movie? The killer is great. The victim sucks. The survivor is in between. What was that? <laughs> Okay there. Uh, it's been a little. That cut's not looking so good. Oh, I, do. I was thinking that. That is that is looking quite aggressively bad. I feel like I'm nauseous, man. Oh man. Oh well, we better move on with this. Yeah. Story. So uh, for our, <laughs> our, our final rating <laughs> system, go, <laughs> our final rating system is killer, which the movie was awesome. It's a must watch, and it has high rewatchability. Survivor is our middle tier. It means it was okay. We might recommend this and some rewatchability. Victim is the dreaded victim. We were all the victim in watching this. We wouldn't recommend it, and it has no rewatchability. For me, I'm going to give this movie a strong Survivor. What? Yeah, I'm not going to give it a killer. Oh. And for me, it's kind of a personal thing because, again, like zombie, I know, I know, I know, it's not zombie movie, but these genre of movies just don't do it for me. But I must admit, this one might be my favorite zombie movie. So I'm going to give it a strong Survivor. I do think this has a lot of good scenes in it, a lot of heartfelt scenes, which I love. You know, the dialogue, like I mentioned, is amazing. The third act, which I think is awesome, and like I said, almost feels like a different movie in itself. And like we talked about, too, this kind of set the standard for what zombie movies would become and the things I really actually like in yeah. some zombie movies. So, Strong Survivor. How about you, Dan? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no. Uh, oh, God. Uh, I'm, Dude, there's blood coming out. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I, are you okay, man? You got blood coming uh, out. I'll probably take him to the hospital. I'm going to give this one a killer. Um, The infected are terrifying. Uh, I, I love the characters. I love the graininess of the picture. The music's amazing. The infected in my opinion, are, are not zombies, but were a major influence on the depiction of zombies in the film. In the 21st century, moving away from the slow-moving ghoulish depictions. You do you not look well. You need to calm down. This de man. is definitely in my top five favorite horror movies and uh, modern-day... 
classic. Oh. Oh. I, I highly recommend this worse. one There's with the lights on the out. Oh, we just had Bear. to refurbish. <laughs> Bear. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, you know, this is all killer, all killer, no filler for me, man. Uh, this is a fantastic <laughs> movie. I've got to get out of here. So, ah. uh, so I can't be here for this. Ah. I got, I got a, Logan, what do you say? Ah. I want killer, no uh. filler on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> New shirt at T Public. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> get your mouths, uh, mouths of madness merch there. There, Deep my dot com. <laughs> thank you thank you dan i'm out of here <laughs> uh for me this is a survivor <laughs> i think sorry sorry dan uh, i think a it's survivor good. i think for me what really kills it for no me is just if there's a zombie <laughs> apocalypse i'm feeding logan to the zombies <laughs> we got one right here <laughs> 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 but you know, it's a good movie. I just don't think, like, you know, I have to agree. <laughs> I'm having, I'm having Dan, <laughs> having him attack me right now. It's a, I wouldn't call it a strong survivor, but I would say, like, you know, this kind of movie is, like, very good. But, like, I'm not a big zombie fan, you know? Like, I'm never, I've never been fascinated with zombie movies. But this is probably one of my favorite zombie movies. So, like, I gotta, I gotta rate a little bit higher. I'm not calling it a victim. All right. So, some something's going on. <laughs> Dang. Well, I'm going to read Nathan, our producer. He rated this movie as well. And he said, I don't dislike zombies, but I don't get excited for them either. And no, I don't differentiate zombies from infected. Fuck you. <laughs> but when a zombie That's movie... you, Dan. <laughs> Taking a stance. I like it. <laughs> but when a zombie movie is good, it's real good. This movie is one of those and is a killer. <laughs> I like that there is a surprising <laughs> amount of heartwarming moments sprinkled in to the death and chaos that really grounds the story and makes you root for the characters. So, yeah, I think Nathan kind of said oh, yeah. a lot of good things there. We also asked our audience what their thoughts were yeah. on 28 Days Later. So let's check our Instagram, and that's at mouths.of.madness. At Modern Monstrous. <laughs> this is one of my top five favorite movies, and I can't wait. I have it on DVD, but the aspect ratio is made for much older televisions. Yeah, I mean, some of this, yeah. it's uh, tough to watch, which, you know, again, is one of my knocks on it, but, you know, it does kind of create an edgier it's edgy. movie. It's edgy. <laughs> for sure, but let us know how you would rate 28 Days Later. And that's at the padded room at Outlook.com. Well, that does it for our review on 28 Days Later. Kevin, Kevin, Dan's gone full. Ah! Ah! Ah!